Welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium here. Um, so it seems as though there is an issue with blog talk. So we won't be able to take callers today. Um, it makes me just a little bit sad for anyone who would have called in and hopefully they know about the YouTube option and can come over here and ask questions. So if you are trying to connect through blog talk um, or the call in number, it's just not working. I can't get through today either. But here we go doing the show on YouTube. So thank you, YouTube. I am just going to give my normal announcements for the day. It's, it just feels so weird not having the second screen. I keep looking over and going, oh, I'm doing something wrong, and I'm not. Um, so here we go with the announcements. If um, First and foremost, um, I am on social media. Today's TikTok clearing was being your authentic self. My TikTok is at Psychic Tony. Go on over there. I have like 210 videos and I think about at least 200 of them are healings or clearings for something. So there's a whole therapy store right there for you. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook. LinkedIn, and I think something else, but I will never reach out. My, my whole point is I will never reach out to you. I will never like try to um, reach out to you and tell you you need a healing reading, whatever. Uh, if somebody reaches out to you, it's not me. Don't get scammed. Please don't get scammed by anyone. Okay, now that's out of the way. I'm going to do the show the way I would normally do it. I'm going to start with names um, that I hear. These can be your loved ones on the other side. Uh, it can be your name, their name, or somebody you both had in common, their name. Uh, if you hear your name, it's your loved one that you've been thinking about saying hi. Okay, if you hear their name, they're letting you know they're with you. Either way, they're letting you know they're with you. But it's up to them if they want to give your name or their name or in some cases, both. In some cases, they really do both. The first name I'm hearing is uh, Maria. And actually, that, Santa that Santana song, Maria, Maria, um, something Har South Harlem. I don't know. I don't know. Maria. And then the next uh, name that I'm hearing is, um, I don't know this name, Gra Graziella, Gra Graziella, okay, I get out roll my tongue, or say fancy names, you also cannot eat in fancy restaurants, but that's another story, no, I can, I just like, don't do it the way the fancy people do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> joking, joking. Take me to nice places. Let's see how that turns out. I'm kidding. I'm trying to be funny. Okay, um, Graziella. Okay, I think I said it right. I think I said it right. Okay, the next name I'm hearing is um, Emmanuel. And the next name I'm hearing is um, Eves. E-V-E-S, Eves, or Evers, Evers, E-V-E-R-S. I think they would call you Eves or call this person Eves or Evs for sure, but the name is Evers. I don't know. Okay, um, the next name is um, Penny, P-E-N-N-Y. The next name is It, okay, so it starts with a J, but I have the feeling it's not pronounced like an American J would be pronounced. So I don't know if the J is like an H or if it's silent. I'm trying to listen so carefully. Um, I, I, 
J U A N O O I T A. Juanita? Johnita? Juanita? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I wish I knew. I don't know. I it might be Juanita. Juanita? Johnita? <laughs> okay. 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 Oh my goodness. Um, however that word is pronounced for you, that is is the name I'm getting it. That's the way they're spelling it. Okay, then. <laughs> and the next name, please. <laughs> the next name, and let's hope this girl can pronounce it. Um, the next name is uh, Mary Ann and then Mary Beth or Mary Elizabeth. Okay, so those are the next names. And then Jack is the next name. Oh, and then um, oh, and then the next name is um, and the next name is um, June like the month, the month. And I just, I had to pause for a moment because some of the names that were coming through, I did not say out loud um, because I feel like they are people that I may know. Um, and, and I don't know if you guys also know them, but I, I do know that I know them. So some of the names were like um, Sylvia and um, so those were, so there were some other names, okay? I'm going to move into the songs now. Um, and Maris, Maris or Mary says, June is my niece. I love that. Now, just because she knows June as her niece, it doesn't mean that if you, if you know of a June in your life here or in your life there, it is still for you. It, it could also be for you. Okay. Um, but I love that. Thank you for the com confirmation. And Maris says, Evie or Eve. Eve is her daughter. I love that. So somebody on the other side is definitely um, connecting. And Juanita is my mom and sister. It's uh, Maris, I need to ask you. And Rebecca um, is, is asking me, Juanita, Juanito. Um, I think it's Juanita. Maris, is are any of those, is your mom or any of those people on the other side or are they all here with you? Okay, now I'm going to go into the songs while they answer that. And some of the people online were asking me for songs and I made them wait until the show started because, um, because, um, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get into blog talk and I was going to have to have a lot of uh, things to do on the show today. Okay, Mirrors, if all of, Mira says all of her people are still here, they're all here. That means somebody on the other side is probably saying hi to you. And I feel like it is a grandfather. So uh, please just know that I feel like it's an older male olive skin. I don't feel like this. This is what I'm seeing. Older male olive skin, stocky build would sometimes wear a hat. Um, I'm not saying a cap, definitely a hat. I see this person in a, what looks like a, this is so funny to me as I say this, um, what looks like a button down shirt, but it could have been one of those shirts that snaps. Um, <laughs> and it's light in color. That's pretty descriptive. I know this person didn't wear this shirt every day but mares if mares or mares if that fits um that would be for you now if it's not your grandfather it could be a great grandfather uncle a male on either side of the family okay so i'm going to say that maybe who put all those names forward for you or not Okay. Uh, the songs that I'm hearing today are come a chameleon. Come a come a come a come a come a chameleon. You come and go. You come and go. And I want to add some lyrics to the song. You're just a player. That's all you are. So please just go and don't be slow. Okay. Those are my own 
lines to that song. Like if somebody comes and goes and they're a chameleon, they're just a player. So I felt the need to like just add that in. If you don't like it, it's okay. But if you love it, let me know because I love it. I love the way I changed that song. Okay. Okay. I think that's really what that guy singing culture club guy wanted to say. You're just a player. So please go and don't be slow. Don't come back because you're nothing but a jack. Off. Jack off. Yes. Thank you. Just saying, folks. I'm just saying. Okay, next. The next song. <laughs> Should I make up lyrics to every single song today? Like, do the real lyrics and then do my lyrics on top of it? <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm sorry for the pain I'm about to inflict upon you. Okay, the next song that I'm serious, seriously, the next song um, I'm hearing today is... Um, I don't know this song, so I can't even try to sing it, but the words to the song are in the dead of the night. And the, that's the only line I'm getting. So if you know that song, you get it. I think whoever is giving me that song does not want me to massacre it. Does not want me to massacre it. <laughs> They're like, no, you get these words and that's it in the dead of the night. <laughs> Um, the next song I'm hearing is from, um, it's, uh, oh my God, I call it the, the cocaine song because when they're singing it, they're grinding, they're literally grinding their jaw. It's the, um, by the Bee Gees, um, well, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Oh, and it's all right. It's okay. Oh, gosh. Um, whether you're a brother, whether you're a mother, staying alive, staying alive. Okay, that's the song. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys, I'm going to just not apologize anymore. And I'm just going to say, uh, yes. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. Rebecca says she loves it. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I am going to go to questions. If you do have a question, please put it in the chat. I will get to your questions in a second. I think they're not afraid to give me too many more. Um, Alberto, Alberto is on the other side that wants to come through. Alberto, I think I'm supposed to be rolling my tongue someplace in there, but yeah. That's not happening on an Alberto, Alberto roll, Alberto roll. Where would you roll your tongue on that one? Alberto roll, Alberto. Oh, Alberto. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even believe I can do that. I can't even believe I rolled my tongue there. Okay, yeah, I'm a total dork and I love it. I can't, I can't feel my something, but I love it. Okay, there's that. Okay, um, next. <laughs> oh, I can't feel my life and I love it. <laughs> there's that. <laughs> I don't want to feel my life and I love it. Um, okay, I'm just making up lyrics. I'm just making poop songs up now. Um, okay, back to the songs. Um that song, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Um, that song, uh, I think if you know that song, I don't need to say anything else. The next song I'm hearing is, um, it's actually not a song, it's a movie. So this person just loved this movie, In the Heat of the Night, because I keep saying this guy, these two characters, and one of them is an older, I think he used to, he looks like Archie Bunker, and then the other one is a... On, 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 uh, I don't know what I, I, I don't even know how we're supposed to describe skin tone anymore. What is the correct word? And I apologize for that. But one of them is very dark in skin color. And he's also in it. 
Um, he's been in a lot of movies, but those two characters, and I think the name of the movie is, or the show that was on TV is In the Heat of the Night. So whomever was on the other, whoever is on the other side loved that show. And then they're showing me the Lawrence Welk show again. Ah, Lawrence Welk. The Lawrence Welk show. So somebody on the other side who loved the Lawrence Welk show or would watch it like every week is also here for you just to let you know. And um, and the wheel of fortune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all of those things. I'm going to go to questions now, but I'm also going to take messages. I want to thank everybody who's sticking with me through this. If you have, if you like the show already, if you hit that like, join, whatever button. Thank you so much for doing that and being with me during my shenanigans of a show. Um, love that. Thank you. So the people with us today, just for those of you watching on TV or just able to listen and not be able to be in the chat are Terry and Anne. Hey, Anne. Um, I think Anne technically asked the first question. So I'm going down to where the first um, actual question is, and I'm pretty sure it's Anne, but I'm going to try to follow the the questions today. Oh, uh, yep, I gave her her song. Oh, is that from Snow White, Whistle While You Work? Do, 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 do. Whistle While You Work. Oh, but that's also a hip hop song. And now I'm hearing the song Twerk It. The females twerk it. I, I know that's not the beat, but that's just how it sounds in my head. And I can't do anything other than what how it sounds in my head. Uh, wait, the females work it? Something, something twerk it? And he has a really deep voice. It's a complete, it might not be the whistle while you twerk song. It might be a completely different song. Yeah, that is kind of how my brain works. <laughs> it's a true fact. Um, okay. Um, do my loved ones have any messages for me? That's and and I'm gonna pick one loved one. It's a male. He was mid age when he passed. Not even mid age. I don't know what mid age is anymore. Um, I'm gonna say he was a little younger when he passed. I see him in like a white t-shirt or a great, a light t-shirt with something on the front of it, but I can't, I can't make out what that is. It's not important. Um, wants to say that, um, that he loves you and you're doing better than you think. Um, find something different or new to do every single day. Keep yourself occupied take notes or write because you could just write and before you know it, you could have a book if you do a little bit every day um, or just write whatever it is you want to write. But you need to start writing things down. He's just showing me pen and paper and writing things down, whether this is what you're supposed to do or want to do every day or the things you would like to do in life, um, like a, a wish book, if you will. Whatever it is, uh, write things down, write things down, write things down. Um, and so you don't lose them or so you don't get, get, so you don't forget. I don't know, but that's what he's saying. So that's your message. And thank you so much for asking that. And of course, I, th then uh, like some other people stepped in with him and they're saying that they all love you and just um, try to find a way every day to do something that you love and then write it down, and then also write down the things that you still need to do and or want to do. Okay, and that's your message. Hey, Sal, Sal, uh, I really, Sal is such a good, good being. He is such a good being. Um, uh, and then Michelle is here with us, and yes, Michelle, uh, finally made alive again. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much. Sharbar, Sharbear. This is why I barely made it out of high school because I cannot like letters flip on me. Um, 
Okay, uh, Michelle, I did find some things in the back of the truck. Not exactly what I thought, but it was something. I wondered where it was. I'm happy you found it, Michelle. That's awesome. Genevieve, I didn't even see you check in earlier. How was your weekend? I hope it was amazing. Um, thank you for sharing uh, some of the pictures with me. Um, Shar. Shar, Shar Bear or Share Bear, S H A R. Uh, okay, I had review ten days and will be will great, but five days ago they eliminated our department. Okay, she had a work review ten days ago, and it was great. Five days ago they eliminated our department. We all got moved to other departments. Will I do will, well in that position? Yeah, you're going to do amazing. You're going to like it even more than you did where you were. Um, there's going to be a moment where you're catching up or acclimating into the situation, but you're absolutely going to love it. So please um, go in with the best attitude, like it's a job change without a job change, which can be really good. And then just flow with it for the rest of the time. Isabella, hi, Tony. Do you see Nick <laughs> proposing anytime soon or taking things to the next level? Oh, Isabella, um, I feel you, girl. I do. I feel you. So here's the thing with women. We're so consumed with this, right? Once we, because women are taskmasters. We are, even in a relationship, when we go out on a date, I'm going to just, I, I, I'm going to say this and I'm not. I'm not putting you on the spot, Isabella. In relationships, traditionally, men have all the power as far as how far the relationship goes and how quickly it reaches that distance. So, for example, we can meet a man, right? Women can meet a man and we can, like, say, I really like this guy. He checks all of my boxes. Um, come on, put the glass slipper on my foot already. It fits. But the guy gets to decide when the next step is taken and um, if, if, if he wants that step. But the same thing is true for women because we can opt out too. But we always think we have to wait for the man and to propose or take that next step, right? Because traditionally, that's how things are done. And I do recommend women, we let men play their traditional roles, right? We are designed to be feminine. We are designed to operate in a certain order and handle things in a certain way. And we are designed to let men have that masculine Role. That's why they have all the testosterone, okay? If we start in a relationship with a man and we take on the masculine, and there probably have been times when in, in relationships where I stepped up in a masculine bit, um, and not by choice, just like when, you know, you you have these two people and one goes here, you feel the need to pick up the, pick it, pick it up and make sure that those things are being done. So, um, Isabella, what, what I'm going to say to you is if this happens, it's going to happen exactly when it's supposed to, and not one moment before. And I know it's very, very difficult to be in a situation with someone and not know, but here's the other thing I want to say to you, Isabella, if you have to question it, if you have to ask about that, there's something inside of you that is very nervous, this isn't going to happen. Or there's something inside of you saying, like almost as a warning that maybe, because when we have this much nervousness about a relationship and where it's going, either it's because we're ignoring red flags from the other person, so we just wanna lock it in as quickly as we can, or we want to, um, or we are knowing maybe this, we're afraid the other person doesn't want the same thing 
and then we're trying to get there quickly. In my personal experience, and I've had a couple different very um, interesting experiences, sit back and let this person show you who he is, Isabella, um, and then act accordingly. Relationships are not just about the getting together, meeting the person, getting married, because that's when it gets tough, right? So everything up until the point of the proposal or the marriage should be a piece of cake. And I actually think people should do year by year contracts <laughs> that we can change as we go over full on marriages. <laughs> Because once you're married, you have so many assumptions and expectations of the other person, and it can ruin a lot of things. But if you have a six-month, three-month, one-year contract, like at the end of the contract, you can be like, ah, oh, this really isn't working for me, or can we change this dynamic? Um, <clears throat> or you know, you know that your contract is coming up and you're like, oh, I better get on my game because I've really been slacking lately. I think when people think they have somebody for the rest of their lives, they just, they kind of, you know, there's just a lot of um, abuse of that is the one way I would say that. Now, not for everyone. And this isn't really me being negative. Uh, look at everybody you know who's married especially younger people who are married and how they behave in that marriage and their expectations of the other person. Um, Isabella, the short answer, which I'm way past that, way too late to give you a short answer. Um, don't worry about the end game. Don't worry about a proposal. Don't worry about um, those sorts of things. Just pay more attention to the behaviors and whether this is something you can live with for the rest of your life or not. I don't know why they're saying it to me that way. I hope that's helpful for you, love. I hope you you find some something in that that's helpful. Okay, Rebecca, if you are joining us, please feel free to post a question. I'm going to get to as many questions as I can in the post. Um Question from my 30 year old son. He would like to know what is going on with their ch children's mother, not noticing what is happening to the kids. Um, I want to make sure I understand that question, Rebecca. If I'm understanding it correctly, he wants to understand why the mother of his children are not seeing or not noticing what is happening to the kids. Is that is that correct, Rebecca? I have to remember where I am so that I can scroll back down there. Rebecca, if that's correct, let me know. Um, I want to make sure I'm answering the correct. Yes, not seeing. Okay, so um, Rebecca, give me your son's name, just his first name, and so I can tap into him. And I think, okay, and as you give me your son's first name, I'm going to tell you, I think the mom might have, there's one word I hear, but I'm going to explain why this might be happening. I think the mom of these kids, the mother of these children might be very self-absorbed. Now that doesn't mean she's arrogant all the time. It just might mean she has quite a bit going on right now in her mind that she's not able to um, see or understand it. And sometimes people do get so overwhelmed in their mind, they're just kind of checked out of it, or they've been seeing it for so long and trying to fix it that they just realize they don't have the power to fix it. I think it's a combination of those two things. I think like also people in their adult life repeat 
things from their childhood. So if her parents didn't notice what happened with her, she will also, she may also be in denial about those things. The first thing, but the first answer I'm going to go with is there was some self-absorption going on there or just so much going on in the mind that she's not able to see it or feels helpless to it. Um, in this case, I wouldn't, in, th in this case, I feel like there's a lot going on in this situation where everybody involved is extremely overwhelmed for a lot of reasons. And again, medications, alcohol, drugs, yada, yada, can play a really big part in these things I'm getting on one side or the other. And when I say medication and drugs, it can be like literally somebody needs to be on medication or somebody's abusing a medication and or drug. And that is also playing into this, Rebecca. I hope that that, that was helpful for you. I'm going to go back up. Uh, here we are. We're at Terry. Uh, Tony, will things go well with my work in the committee? I feel pressure. Don't, don't, you've got this. Um, Terry, you've got this. Don't worry. It's going to fall into place. It's going to be beautiful. The only pressure you're feeling is you want to exceed expectations. You will just breathe in, breathe out, get her done, get her done, get her done. Okay. Um, Sal, hey Sal. Um, I was thinking about trying a book trailer for advertising on YouTube. I love that. Yeah, I love it. Um, remember on YouTube, you really have to take whatever you do on YouTube and put it every place else to really get that going. Like I'll do my TikTok video, but then I put it on absolutely everything else to like up those numbers and to get the visibility to it. I love that. Please do it, Sal. It's going to be amazing. And do different ones for each venue, but share them all with each other. Absolutely do that. Okay, Maris, Rebecca, took care of that, took care of that. Let's see. Heather's with us. Jay Francis. Hey, Jay Francis. I love you too. Um, let's see. And... I answered that question already. Uh, I don't know if I'm repeating things. Um, Michelle Lee says, I would love to hear from my late husband, Casey. I hope I'm saying his name right. I believe I am. And... Yeah, he's here. But somebody else is here, Michelle. Um, <clears throat> a female, I'm going to, it could be a mom, but it also could be a grandmom. And she really wants to speak also. And the first thing she wants to say is she, sorry, uh, Michelle, she feels like you feel alone or you, you feel and or think you are alone a lot of the time. Like you have this loneliness or this feeling of loneliness about you. And she's really sorry. And she wants to say it's okay to get, get back into life. I don't know if this is making sense to you. And it doesn't have to mean um, like maybe you, you are doing certain things, but to really get put yourself out there again in whatever area you've been kind of holding back. Um, I do feel like sh I'm hearing the word fear, like there might be a certain amount of fear with you. Um, just fear in general, or fear with getting back out and doing certain things. Now, one of the things that I'm getting is she is just saying, just get out there and do what you can live your life while you can. And then, um, Casey, Casey is coming through and he is, uh, uh, the first thing I hear is that song. And I, you know, I know the song, but when they come through only the part 
that they're singing to me is the part I'm getting because that's the part that's meant for you, those, those specific words. So even though I, if I weren't on the show right now, I might know the rest of this song. But right now, these are the only words I'm getting. And it's, I'm sorry. Nah, nah, nah. So I don't, I can't get the rest of the songs, but basically he's saying he's sorry for whatever, for leaving, for something that happened, whatever it is, he's sorry. And you're going to know better than I do what that is. And um, the next thing that Casey would want to say is he really misses. <laughs> okay. He really misses the in bed time, but not the time, the, um, like just holding, touching time, just being in bed, like the uh, snuggle touching time, sleeping together, whatever it would be, but not the actual stuff time. He misses that too, but you know, that's a different show. Um, he really misses that. Like, just like, I don't know if it would be like, I'm going to make a little bit of a guess here. Like, you know how some people like sleep in on Sundays or just hang out in bed on Sundays or just whatever, talk that, that time. That's, I feel like what he is referring to. And then the, the next thing is um, that what, uh, there's another song he's uh, singing just a line to his, uh, just a little bit, just a little bit. I think that's Georgia something line. Um, ah, na, 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 na. Um, but he's only singing that, saying that phrase of just a little bit, just a little bit, like whether that's just a little bit more time, just a little bit more, just a little bit. Okay. Or you just had a little bit of time just a little bit is what's coming through and then the next thing is um that he wants to say is that oh it was just a little bit it was such a oh, i'm gonna cry i can't cry it was just such a little bit and what i wouldn't give for all of it what i wouldn't give for all of it Okay, I'm going to have to move on because this is going to make me just lose it. Um, but yes, those are the messages and love, 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 bringing you love every single day. Um, white butterflies and many laughs or moths, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> are one of his confirmations or signs for you. Okay, lovely. Um, okay, love, love, love. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, sorry. Um, I, in the beginning of the show, I talked about the heat of the night and the Archie Bunker, but Carol O'Connor, um, thank you, Jay Francis. Carol O'Connor was in the heat of the night, but doesn't he kind of look like the Archie Bunker guy? Are they the same guy? That's what I want to know right now. Um, I, they seemed so similar. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Margaret. Hi, Tony. Is my mom Rena around? It's R I N A H. So I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that appropriately. Uh, Rena, I'm just going to call her Rina. Rena. I'm just going to call her R. Are you? Yes. And my screen flashed as I said that. So yes, she's here. Um, what would you like to tell Margaret? Um, the first thing that comes through is I'm um, something about being sick. I just hear something sick, something sick, like I'm not sick or it's okay. Um, something about sick. And did she lose a lot of weight? Because I see a fuller woman and then a thinner woman, a fuller woman, not really big, but you know, normal size and then very thin. Um, just 
like I hear the term weight loss or significant weight loss. And then I'm so please, Margaret, I'm going to I'm going to see where I am here. And then I'm going to go down and ask you, Margaret, please give me confirmations to let me know I'm I'm getting the right person here. And then the next thing I'm hearing is that she had she had a good a good life. It was a good life. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. It was better than most. It was better than most, even though it wasn't perfect. And, you know, of course, everybody's life could be a little bit, you know, uh, uh, whatever. Everybody has good and bad, but she had a good life. She had a good life. And thank you. And the next thing she wants to say is that uh, there's a... A proposal, a proposal. I don't understand if this is for you, Margaret, or for someone else, but some kind of proposal with like, I see somebody down on a knee with a ring and I don't, a proposal. I hope I'm not ruining, ruining a surprise from someone. Maybe she's talking about her own personal proposal. Um, and that's supposed to be a confirmation of some sort. I don't know if this is from the past, something that happened already or something coming in. Um, the next thing is that the next thing she would want to say is Yeah, I, I feel like there might be something coming in. Um, but the, the biggest thing she would want you to know, she's okay. She's for, for however we would think about it. It's not like when she was here, she's healthy, she's happy, she's free. She's very free now. Okay. Um, I am going to go to, uh, let me see, where was I? Um... Okay, I have to go down a little further. I feel like I lost my place and I want to apologize to everybody for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is where I was. Okay. Um, Jay Francis says her grandpa loved the Wheel of Fortune, which at the beginning of the show I brought up. So, hey, I love that. Uh he also likes Saved by the Bell. I love that too. Um, Nancy wants to know, is the healing organization that I am involved with now a positive and good fit for me? For now it is. Um, it is for now. Um, in about six months, you might get an option or an opportunity to either move up or move on. It'll be up to you what you decide to do. Um, I do feel like you will be involved with this for about six more months. And then after that, something else is going to come in and be a really good fit for you. Now, sometimes the way I'm hearing this is you may find something else that's a good fit. And then the, your current company offers you to move up. Or the current current organization offers you something to move up, but I feel like you might move on, but that won't happen for four to six months. Like you might find something or decide in four months to start looking. And then within that six month period, there may be something there. That's what I'm hearing for that. Nancy, I hope that answers your question and I'm understanding the question appropriately. Um, okay. So there is a Terry. Uh, is my forever guy coming to me anytime soon? <laughs> I'm feeling lonely again lately. Um, you know, people are, are sometimes we meet someone and they can be our forever person, depending on how much we're willing to deal with or put up with or negotiate or sacrifice. But what I'm hearing, um, Terry, is someone is going to be coming in in approximately within a month and a half. 
um, go slow, have fun. Don't take it too seriously. Just enjoy it. Um, I feel like there's the potential for two or three people to come into your life. Um, and I know, you know, here's the thing. Some people really enjoy dating and having that variety. And there, there's really nothing wrong with that. However, um, some people just want to meet that person and get to the, like all the good memories and what we would call the rest of the life with that person. And I understand that aspect also, especially if you meet somebody and you're so into them and you think this is the person. Um, I will say this, Terry, I feel like you have the potential to have two or three relationships prior to meeting the one. So the sooner you start talking to people, that doesn't mean that each relationship has to be like a um, come to heaven moment. <laughs> it doesn't have to have the involved with it. Um, it can just be a relationship that is non- or non-intimate uh, um, in it. Um, I feel like the relationships will be either a couple weeks or a couple months, and then you're going to meet the person who has the potential for the very, very long-term relationship. And I'll tell you, I feel like the person with a long-term relationship for you is a little older than you. Now, and here's the thing I'm going to say. I know when we hear this, we're like, I, I'm just going to skip the other relationships and jump right into the next guy. Don't. Don't do that. Don't feel like that. Because if you have to learn lessons or still have things you need to learn about yourself or another person, do it with someone who's not going to stick around forever. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because if we're going to have chaotic moments, let it be with a temporary person than with the forever person. <laughs> so if there are still th things that you need to learn and heal and get through, let it be with somebody that is, you know, not that you don't care about that person, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I feel like... Depending on how long you stay in each or what you learn in each situation, it will either either be two or three people. And then you're going to meet the final or the person who is the who you have the um, potential to have a long term relationship with. I do feel like that, again, this person's a little bit older than you. They have um, a little bit if not gray hair, graying hair, they might have like a little bit of gray already coming in. Um, they're a little bit more, I don't want to say sophisticated, but maybe a little bit more mature than some of the people that you have been with prior. You are going to meet these people organically. So you do have to get out and start dating and being in that dating scene and enjoy being out and dating with people. Um, make it fun. Like I know a lot of people, especially women, don't love the idea of dating to meet someone new. Like when we first meet someone, that whole dating process, because for men, you throw on pants, a shirt and, you know, comb your hair, pull it back, whatever you do with it. For women, there's like 20 outfit changes, hair, makeup, um, it just, there's so much more that goes into it, I think, for women than for men. Um, and knowing that men typically have the power to say if they want to go out again or not puts a lot more pressure on the woman. So men, be gentle with us. Um, but it, here's what I'm personally going to say. If I meet a man and I go to dinner and he feels like it's not going to go anywhere. Just don't take me out on a second date. I won't be offended. I hate most restaurant food. 
Okay. So I will not be offended. I will not be upset. I will be happy. The pressure is off. That one's done. Let's get to the next one. <laughs> this is why I don't date. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> All right then. So, but, but it is a lot, the, the whole dating thing for women is very different than men. So here's my dating tip for women. Go out on a date with your, your female friends, go out on a date with your friend, with a, with a male friend 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 or a female friend and practice that whole dating thing to the point where you're comfortable. Um, if you have a really good female friend that's got you, like go out and say, okay, we're going to pretend this is a date and we're going to do the awkwardness of the date and get it out of the way. Um, Terry, you are going to meet some people more naturally, organically, out in public. Um, I do feel like there is, if you don't go to farmer's markets or to places where you can just like, what do they call them? Roadside fruit and vegetable places. I feel like you should do a couple of those um, because I see you picking out some kind of fruit and veg or vegetable. And I do feel like it is in an outdoor environment. So I do feel like you should hit a couple of those. And then I also feel like if you do go to places to eat either with friends or um, whatever, uh, if you can, for as long as you can do the outside, literal outside venue of eating, like if they have outdoor tables, sit there because you're literally going to meet this person outdoors. Um, I do feel like the person who has the potential to be the longer term relationship, given the fact that you date a couple of them first, is coming in in six months approximately. OK, now here's my thing. Sometimes people don't like the idea that there's going to be one or two or maybe three people before. Now, you know, just like just uh, get it done, like go talk to them, date them push buttons, let them push your buttons and get on to the next one. Like seriously, now you know this is what you have in front of you until you get to this guy. It's like taking um, classes that you have to take to get out of the way to get your your diploma. I don't know how what other analogy to use, but that's the one I'm using. So please, by all means, do that. Get out, be out of doors. And uh, literally in the outside, I also see. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little different. I think I've I've um, um, uh, 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 I, I'm going to do something a little different. And Terry, I hope that helps. I'm going to say, um, Margaret said after you channeled my mom a lot, I I lost the feed. Thank you. I believe that was her. I'm so sorry, Margaret. Go back and re-listen after the show and see if that comes through again. Um, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this. Um, I don't know where I was going. Okay. So, so this is what I'm going to do <laughs> for today's show. The, the, I'm going to tell you some ways that I'm seeing that people are going to meet potential partners. You guys, it, it could be for you. It could be for somebody else. But if you hear something that fits for you, do it. I'm seeing Halloween. I'm seeing a lot coming in in the fall. So some of you are going to meet your potential partners at Halloween parties. Dress up Halloween parties, not not just like a show up as you would show up anyplace else, but some someone out there or a couple people out there are going to costume, costume Halloween parties, and they're going to um, meet partners there um, um, and not bar parties like house costume parties or themed costume parties of friends. If somebody's going to one and they invite you, who cares if you don't know everybody there? Thank God you don't know everybody there. Freaking go. Just go. The next thing is pumpkin patches and hay rides. A lot of 
partner meeting at pumpkin patches and hay rides. So uh, get some girlies together and go. I see a lot of people having lattes and hot chocolates and meeting each other, picking pumpkins, apples, um, ap fruit picking is another one that I'm seeing. Um, get groups of people together and go and meet people. The other thing that I'm seeing is for people to potentially meet um, a lot of being like outside. Like even if you're at a bar, a restaurant, a coffee place, make sure it's someplace that has something outside. Okay. I went with um, some, uh, some, someone and we, we, every place we went, we sat outside. We sat outside to eat dinner. We sat outside to have dessert. And it was just so nice. And I think where I live, the weather turns so quickly. Um, and we get such a short amount of nice weather to be outside if you, if you can do it. Um, going into the winter, I see quite a few people meeting people on the slopes or the snow, which to me is... Um, skiing, snowboarding, that being in tubes and, and going down snow things. I don't know if that's called tubing. <laughs> Maybe it seems very logical. It would be called tubing, um, but down snow. Um, as summer um, is coming to a uh, not a close because we still do have a little bit of summer here. I see people meeting. Um, if you, so a couple of people are going to take a singles cruise or, and it doesn't have to be like a cruise out of Florida. It could be like a single going on like a, um, like a, a, dr a drinks at night cruise, like that just goes around the water where you live, like drinks and appetizers at night. A couple of people meeting up that way. Uh, I don't really like this one. I actually don't like this one at all. But a couple of people meeting where they throw those axes, like throwing axes. How much is the insurance on that? I don't even know. That's craziness to me. Okay. The next thing that I'm seeing for people meeting in is a couple of people meeting during golf, but not actually golf, just like where you hit the balls. Like, I know that looks more like baseball than golf because golf is way down here and looks awkward, but like a driving range, that's what it's called. A driving range meeting somebody at a driving range. And then the next one is, um, an actual singles cruise and a singles. Yeah, it's a singles cruise. Meet a couple of people will you'll meet uh, have a potential to meet a partner on a singles cruise and in a water park. Uh, somebody's going to meet their partner in a water park. I feel like this is a younger couple that's going to meet up and meet your partner in a water park. Uh, I think like maybe one person might meet somebody at a museum indoors staring at a picture. It won't be me. That will not, that will never be me. Just saying. <laughs> museum, art museum, any of that, that's not me. You will never, I will never voluntarily go in there and look at art for hours. <laughs> never. And meet somebody there that I think I can have a future with because if you like to do that sort of thing, that's, I'm not your partner. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but somebody, people do like that. And the people who do get there, do that. Um, okay, there's just a couple things with boats, like being out on water and boats, whether it be a cruise, a sailboat, whatever. If you get the invite, go for it, do it. Um, otherwise, a lot of people meeting in the fall, uh, which is coming in actually and like in uh, around bales of hay and corn mazes and pumpkin patches i love you all so much thank you for spending this time with me i'm really grateful to each and every one of you